In GameMaker, events are generally associated to GameMaker objects. Events such as create, step, and draw are events that we are familiar with, but what if I want to have events inside of constructor objects? In this video, I'm gonna show how we can implement events inside of constructor objects using an event chain and showcase how this solution also solves the problem when it comes to inheriting events through constructor objects. Here I have an enemy constructor class. Now, typically if I wanted to create an event, I would create a method and give it the name of the event that I wish to create. In this case, I wish to create an update event. However, problems start to arise when we want to inherit from this class. If I create a skeleton class and have it inherit from our enemy, when I go to redefine the update event, I end up overriding the update event in the enemy parent. This can be a problem because there may be code inside of this update event that I wish to execute inside of the child object as well. Traditionally, the solution to this would be to create a snapshot of the update method from the parent before overriding it. We would do that by saying, static update enemy is update and inside the child's update method we would make sure to make a call to our parents update method now this is fine and technically works but as you can see the more layers that we introduce into the inheritance tree the more methods that we have to start creating and each of those methods have to be context sensitive indicating the level of inheritance that they are associated to so if i wanted to create another child to this skeleton called big skeleton and have this inherit from our skeleton parent then we would have to introduce another level of method capture called static update skeleton is update and update is our new overrided event method. And then inside of this, I would call update skeleton and it's very easy to see how this can start to become very tedious and repetitive. So how can we solve this problem? This is going to implement what I refer to as an event chain or simply an event array. Rather than define our update methods every single time that we want to create a new class, I'm going to define the update method only once inside of the base root class. So I will go ahead and remove our updates from our child classes and I will leave it inside of our parent class. Now I will go ahead and create a private section and inside of the private section, I will create an array called on update callbacks. Now I will add a new public method called on updates. And this update will take two parameters, a callback and an optional data parameter. Now I will simply push this into our on update callbacks array. And I will wrap this in a struct where I say callback is our incoming callback parameter and data is our optional incoming data parameter. So now every object will have an additional method called on update that I will use to define what should be the update behavior. And update will simply iterate over this array now. I will go ahead and fetch the stored data from this array. I will parse the callback from it. I will parse the data from it. And then I will simply run the callback with the data passed in. So now when I call update, what it's going to do is it's going to run over every stored callback inside of our update array and execute those. Now, instead of having to redefine the update method in every single child object, I can simply just define the unique on update behavior. To do this, I'm going to define a new section inside of our constructor objects. So up to this point, we have had a public section. We've had a private section. And now I'm gonna define a new section called events. This is where I will declare the unique behavior for our events. In order to do this, I'm just gonna say on updates and I will pass in our callback function and I will say show debug message, hello from enemy. Now inside of our child classes, I don't have to redeclare any new methods. I can simply just define the unique update behavior that will be invoked at this level. Show debug message, hello from skeleton. And once again, to 
declare it in our third class. Hello from big skeleton. What's great about this is because the inheritance happens sequentially, event callbacks get pushed into the array in the order that the classes are declared. So I know that when I go ahead and run this and create an instance of our big skeleton, we should preserve the order of these methods. Hello from skeleton and then hello from big skeleton. Let's go ahead and collapse these and let's go ahead and create an instance. Skeleton is new big skeleton. And now I just need to make sure to call this update event wherever I would like it to update. So let's go ahead and move this code out of here. Actually, I will open up this OBJ enemy object. First, I will declare the skeleton instance in here, and then I will add a step event, and I will say skeleton.update. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that GameMaker objects events will run automatically, but constructor object events have to be manually invoked. So any sort of event that we create, we have to make sure to call that event, otherwise it won't run. So in this case, since we are just creating an update event, we could just throw this in our step event and have that code run there. And here, if I take a look at our output, we can see that we first get hello from enemy, hello from skeleton, and hello from big skeleton. So this is the fundamental structure to creating event chains inside of constructor objects. Now, the update event is one that I use quite often because there are a lot of times that I want my constructor objects to update, but we can define these for any sort Sort of situation we may need them. One thing that I also like to do is to define a cleanup event. Let's say that for some reason I wanted to have a data structure inside of our enemy. I would say list is ds list create. And as with any data structure, it would be very important for us to make sure that we destroy this list when we are done with it. But the question comes, where do I destroy this list from inside of the constructor object? The easy way to do this is to define a new event called cleanup. And alongside of that, we will have a on cleanup. I will go ahead and copy this code and make the appropriate adjustments. I will go ahead and do the same for updates and make sure that I am pointing to our on cleanup callbacks array. And then lastly, I need to make sure to declare this array. So now I've defined the framework logic for this new event, but let's go ahead and declare the actual logic that should run inside of it on cleanup. And here I will say DS list destroy list. Now I just need to make sure to call this cleanup event whenever I'm ready for it. So inside of our game maker object that is instantiating and holding this skeleton object, I'm gonna go ahead and add a cleanup event. And I'm simply going to say skeleton.cleanup. All right, and that's it. We have just implemented a cleanup event. So once again, if I wanted to have a, another data structure at some point later on down this chain, I could say surface is surface create. Now I would want to make sure that I clean up the surface on cleanup. Surface free surface. So now the big skeleton class will implement a surface instance and clean that up when we're done with it. And the enemy object will implement a list instance and delete that when we're done with it. In order to confirm this, let's just go ahead and say show debug message freeing surface. In our root class, let's go ahead and say show debug message destroy list. Now inside of our game maker object, inside of our step event, I'm just gonna say if keyboard check pressed a VK space, let's just say instance destroy. So that will invoke our instance destroy, which should invoke our cleanup, which should first invoke the cleanup on our enemy and then invoke the cleanup on our big skeleton child class. And we can see that our update event is still running, but if I go ahead and press space and I take a look here, we can see that destroy list is called and freeing surface is called. So here we have just declared two different events, a cleanup and an update event. And again, the beauty of this is that I don't have to worry about inheritance at all. I can just simply define the on update or on cleanup logic from within the class. The other great part about this is that I can also declare this logic from outside of the class. If for some reason I wanted to have another object act on this skeleton and declare the on update or on cleanup behavior, we can just inject a callback into that event chain. So even from outside of the class, if I wanted to say skeleton on update, I could say show debug message 
hello from gm object. Let's go ahead and output our string ID. So now we have a function that is bound to our game maker object running its code inside of the update chain of our constructor object. And sure enough, I can see hello from GM object reference of instance ID 100001. Another great part of this implementation is that we can also chain these events. Let's say that I created a new class called sword. And the skeleton was gonna hold an instance of the sword. So let's come to our skeleton down here. I'm gonna say sword is new sword. And now inside of our sword class, let's go ahead and create something that needs to be cleaned up. Let's say our sword has an audio emitter. Now I want to go ahead and declare my on cleanup. And I'm going to say audio emitter free of audio emitter. All right, so our sword holds an audio emitter and on our cleanup event, we're going to free that audio emitter. And the skeleton currently holds an instance of that sword. As I mentioned, we can chain these events. So inside of the skeleton, I can just say on cleanup. And now inside of this, I'm gonna say sword cleanup. So now when I call cleanup on the skeleton, which happens in our game maker object, I know that our sword cleanup event will also run. So we can chain these events to go as deep as we would like them to and know that we're gonna have consistent and predictable behavior no matter how far down the inheritance or association chain that we go. So this is the essence to custom events inside of constructor objects. I wanna go ahead and show an implementation of this that I have. I have created a base class, and this is the class that I have most of my constructor objects inherit from, since I want this type of behavior to be pretty persistent across all of my constructor objects if they have any sort of complexities. So instead of having to redefine the events for each and every constructor instance, instead, I have just created a base class that I inherit most of my classes from. And here you can see we have a bunch of different events. I have activate, cleanup, deactivate, destroy, hide, initialize, render, show, update. These are really awesome events to have rather than having to do any sort of manual visibility logic, for example, I can just say skeleton show or skeleton hide. And I can have all of the logic wrapped up inside of these methods and know that they will get preserved through the event chain. I will go ahead and post a copy of this base class and I recommend you go check it out and download it and maybe even plug it into your project. But a great practice would also be to try to implement your own base class that you could use in your constructor objects and come up with events that you find yourself needing and using repeatedly. All right, that's it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.